Former U.S. President Donald Trump has won the Iowa Republican caucuses. Trump won 51% of the votes, giving him the largest margin of victory in the history of the state's Republican caucuses. Ron DeSantis, surprisingly, the Florida governor secured a distant second place, finishing with 21% of the vote. While Nikki Haley, the former South Carolina governor, trailed in third place with just 19%. Uh, this has been an incredible experience. The people have been, this is the third time we've won. But this is the biggest win. This is a, they said, well, if you win by 12%, that's a big win. That's going to be very hard to do. Well, I think we've more than doubled that, I guess, tripled it maybe. Trump's history-making victory in Iowa intensified skepticism that if any of his opponents will be able to overtake him in the Republican primary. Despite the 91 felony counts against him, Trump has maintained a consistent and significant lead in the 2024 U.S. race. And the Iowa results underscored his enduring popularity with the Republican base. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, who came in last in Iowa, quit the 2024 race after poor performance. And he now endorses Trump for the Republican primary. While Nikki Haley clarified earlier that she is not interested for the post of vice president. More than 1,600 presents in Iowa held Republican caucuses this year. Unlike the primary elections, the caucuses are being conducted by political parties and not the state government. Historically, presidential candidates have looked to Iowa caucus to help launch themselves to nominee status. But the Iowa caucus has not always been the best predictor of who will be the party's nominee, even less so at predicting who will win the presidency. Despite that, the caucus's outcome frequently provides an advantage to winners, often narrowing down the field by prompting underperforming candidates to exit the race. In this case, that was Vivek Ramaswamy. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, live from New York. Susan, welcome to the broadcast. Let's talk about the man of the hour. Donald Trump won with 51% of the vote. We know now the focus will, of course, shift to New Hampshire. How is he looking there? Yeah, New Hampshire is a complete different beast from Iowa. First of all, it's an official primary. Second of all, it's a lot more diverse, a moderate than in Iowa. You know, Donald Trump could ultimately afford to lose New Hampshire moving forward, but there is a lot of talk about second place. And while ultimately, you know, second place isn't going to matter in the long run, with New Hampshire, it may matter if uh, Donald Trump wins New Hampshire and he wins Iowa then second place is really not going to matter. Then the other candidates really have to think why they're in it. However, if Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley win New Hampshire, then they could think about really moving forward uh, and they may gain some sort of momentum. Again, you know, the margins are very wide. The difference is very wide. And, you know, uh, I was listening to uh, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. He was saying, uh, that people need to start realizing that this is a movement by Donald Trump. This is really uh, not a race for candidate. Uh, and the sooner that these other candidates step away, the sooner, you know, Donald Trump can really start his campaign and people can start getting around him. You know, you never know. Uh, things have changed a lot of times in these presidential uh, elections. But ultimately, I think uh, New Hampshire is going to be a lot more telling uh, than Iowa is because of the reasons that I mentioned. The, the moderates there, the independents, are really going to speak. You know, there's the issue of abortion. Right. You know, there is the issue of, um, you know, uh, other issues that moderates are very uh, passionate about that, right. you know, Iowans uh, didn't really reflect on. Absolutely, Susan. Now, you know, just after the Iowa caucus results came out, Nikki Haley went on record to say that she is the last hope to uh, stop the Trump-Biden nightmare, she called it. 
What are you hearing from the voters? Are they really seeing it as a nightmare, supposed to be the rematch of uh, the last election, of course? Yeah, you know, I mean, we we see polls that uh, this is an election no one asked for between uh, former President Donald Trump and incumbent Joe Biden on the one hand. But on the other hand, we see that uh, people uh, are supporting these two candidates, and it seems that uh, they are the ones that uh, are surging ultimately to become the nominees. You know, moving forward, we are still months away from the general uh, a lot could happen until then and nikki haley is in it uh, to win it and uh, she does say uh, what she needs to to move forward uh, but on the other hand you know these are two individuals that are very unpopular among a lot of people you see joe biden really reflecting in the polls a popularity of 33 percent the latest a a abc poll and then you have donald trump uh, where uh, even Nikki Haley and a lot of Republicans call themselves never Trumpers. Yeah. Supporters of Nikki Haley, upwards of 40 percent, have made very clear that if Nikki Haley is not their nominee, they would vote for Joe Biden. So it's, you know, it's natural for Nikki Haley to say that, but ultimately the American voter is going to be the one that speaks. Absolutely. And it seems like Nikki Haley is really banking on that. All right, Susan, thank you so much for joining us here on this broadcast and getting us all those updates as always.